You know what time it is. Untamed. Glendalyn. I never read Love Warrior. But let me read Untamed. Let me focus. Okay. So we talked about the knowing. The be. The be still and knowing. My grandma blowing me kisses. Imagine, key three, dare to imagine, dare to. When I was 20 years old, I found myself sitting on a dirty bathroom floor holding a positive pregnancy test. I stared at the little blue cross and thought, well, this is impossible. There could not be a worse candidate for motherhood on earth. I binged and purged several times a day for 16 years. I've been drinking myself to blackout every night for the previous seven. I destroyed my liver, my credit, my record, my tooth enamel, and all of my relationships. My aching head, the empty beer bottles on the floor, my bank account, my ringless, trembling fingers, they all scream, no, not you. Yet something inside me whispered, yes, me. All evidence to the contrary, I can imagine myself as a sober, thriving mother. I became sober and then I became a mother, a wife, and a writer. Fast forward. Fast forward 14 years. Reminder. I'm 40 years old. I'm 40 years old now. I've got one husband, two dogs, and three children who adore their father. I also have a skyrocketing writing career based partly on my traditional family and Christianity. I'm at an event to launch my new book, the highly anticipated memoir about my marriage's redemption. At that event, a woman walks into the room and I look at her and fall madly in love within the same moment. My circumstances, my fear, my religion, my career, they all scream, no, not her. And yet something inside of me whispered, yes, her. The something inside of me was my imagination. All evidence to the contrary, I could imagine myself as Abby's partner. I could imagine the kind of love in which I was fully seen, known, and cherished. The facts were right there in front of me to see. But the truth was right there inside of me to feel, swelling, cresting, insisting, there is a life, there is a life meant for you that is truer than the one you're living. But in order to have it, you will have to forge it yourself. You will have to create on the outside what you are imagining on the inside. Only you can bring it forth and it will cost you everything. <laughs> Glennon, and this is some real shit right here, I'm telling you. Wow. I have learned to live by faith, which does not mean that I live by a set of unwavering beliefs or dogma that men laid down ages ago to keep their power by controlling others. My faith has nothing to do with religion anymore. To me, living by faith is allowing the swelling and the pressing inside of me to direct my outward words and decisions. Because to me, God is not a being outside of me. God is the fire, the nudge, the warm liquid gold swelling and pressing inside of me. In fact, my favorite idea of faith is a belief is a belief in the unseen order of things. There are two order orders of things. There is the seen order unfolding in front of us every day on our streets and in the news. In this visible order, violence reigns and children are shot in their schools and warmongers prosper and 1% of the world hoards half of all we have. We call this the order of things. We call this order of things reality. This is the way things are. It's all we can see because it's all we ever seen. Yet something inside us rejects it. We know instinctively that this is not the intended order of things. This is not how things are meant to be. We know that there is a better, truer, wilder way. That better way is the unseen order inside us. It is the vision we carry in our imagination about a truer, more beautiful world. One in which all children have enough to eat, 
we no longer kill each other and mothers do not have to cross deserts with their babies on their backs. This better idea is what Jews call Shalom, Buddhists call Nirvana, Christians call Heaven, Muslims call Salam, and many agnostics call peace. Agnostics call peace. It is not a place out there, not yet. It's the hopeful swelling in here, pressing through our skin, insisting that this is all meant to be more beautiful than this. And it can be if we refuse to wait to die and go to heaven. And instead of and instead find heaven inside of us and give birth to it here and now. If we work to make the vision of the unseen order swelling inside us visible in our lives, homes and nations, we will make reality more beautiful on earth as it is in heaven, in our material world as it is in our imagination. Tabitha. She was born into captivity. The only, the only visible order she's ever known includes cages and dirty pink bunnies and weak bored applause. Tabitha never knew the wow, yet Tabitha knew the wow. It was in her. She sensed the pressing of the unseen order like a relentless hunch. Perhaps for us, as for Tabitha, the deepest truth is not what we can see, but what we can imagine. Perhaps imagination is not where we go to escape reality, but where we go to remember it. Perhaps when we want to know the original plan for our lives, families, world, we should consult not what's in front of us, but what's inside of us. Imagination is how personal and worldwide revolutions begin. I have a dream, said Martin Luther King Jr. Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning, said Gloria Steinem. In order to move our culture forward, revolutionaries have had, have had to speak and plan from the unseen order inside of themselves, inside them. For those of us who were not consulted in the building of the visible order, igniting our imagination is the only way to see beyond what was created to leave us out. For those of us who were not consulted in the building of the visible order, igniting our imagination is the only way to see beyond what was created to leave us out. I am a book marker. I have to start right there. Flow in me. If those who were not part of the building of the reality only consult reality for possibilities, Reality will never change. We will keep shuffling and competing for a seat at their table instead of building our own tables. We will keep banging our heads on their glass ceilings instead of pitching our own huge tent outside. We will remain caged by this world instead of taking our rightful place as co-creators of it. We will remain caged by this world instead of taking our rightful place as co-creators of it. We got to pay attention. We must pay attention. So important. Each of us were born to bring forth something that has never existed. A way of being, a family, an idea, art, a community, something brand new. We are here to fully introduce ourselves, to impose ourselves and ideas and thoughts and dreams onto the world, leaving it changed forever by who we are and what we bring forth from our depths. So we cannot contort ourselves to fit into the visible order. We must unleash ourselves and watch the world reorder itself in front of our eyes. We must unleash ourselves, free ourselves, untame ourselves, unlearn the conditioning and the program, reteach ourselves, me-search ourselves, learn and know self and watch the world reorder itself in front of our eyes. I feel you, Glennon, and I concur. My job is to listen deeply to women. What many tell me is that they harbor an achy, heavy hunch in their lives. Relationships and world were meant to be more beautiful than they are. They ask, should my marriage feel more loving than this? Than this? 
I'm telling you, a loving marriage is, whew, that's where it's at. I love it. I appreciate. Thank you, boss. Should my religion be more alive and kind than this? Thank you, Ebony. I love me. <laughs> Should my work be more meaningful and my community be more connected? Shouldn't the world I'm leaving to my babies be less brutal? Because that's what I call this world. Brute tifo. Because it's brutal and beautiful. Isn't all just supposed to be more beautiful than this? The woman asking these questions reminds me of Tabitha. They are stalking the periphery of their lives, feeling disconnected, feeling discontent. To me, this is exciting. Okay, let me slow down because I'm getting so excited because, you know, when something's resonating and truth is being revealed, you know, I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, I define me. Oh, I see. They are stuck in the periphery of their lives, feeling discontent. To me, this is exciting because discontent is the nagging of the imagination. Discontent is the evidence that your imagination has not given up on you. It's still pressing, swelling, trying to get your attention by whispering, not this, not this. Not this is a very important stage, but knowing what we do not want is not the same as knowing what we do want. But knowing what we do not want is not the same as knowing what we do want. So how can we get from not this to this instead? How can we move from feeling discontent to creating new lives and new worlds? In other words, how can we begin to live from our imagination instead of our indoctrination? Language is my favorite tool, so I use it to help people build and bridge between what's in front of them and what's inside of them. I have learned that if we want to hear the voice of imagination, we must speak to it in the language it understands. If we want to know who we were meant to be before the world told us to be, told us who to be. If we want to know where we were meant to go before we were put in our place. If we want to taste freedom instead of control then we must relearn our soul's native tongue. When women, when women write to me in the language of indoctr indoctrination, when they use words like good and should and right and wrong, <laughs> I try to speak back to them in the language of imagination. We are all bilingual. Yes, we are. We speak the language of indoctrination, but our native language is our language of imagination. When we use the language of indoctrination with it should and shouldn't, right, wrong, good, bad, we are activating our minds. That's not what we're going for here. Because our minds are polluted by our training. In order to get beyond our training, we need to activate our imaginations. Our minds are excuse makers. Our imaginations are storytellers. So instead of asking ourselves what's right or wrong, we must ask ourselves what is true and beautiful. Then our imagination rises inside of us, thanks us for finally consulting it after all of these years and tells us a story. Claire wrote to me most recently. She's a lawyer and her she's a lawyer and her daughter and the daughter of an alcoholic. When she sat down to email me, she had just woken up, still woozy from her nightly take the edge off glasses of wine. She wrote that she spends most of her time numb or foggy or ashamed. Gee, I feel like I'm wasting my life, she wrote. What should I do? Claire, I wrote, what is the truest, most beautiful story about your life you can imagine? Sasha wrote to tell me about her marriage. She married a guy who was distant and cold, just like her father had been. Sasha spent most of her days hustling to earn her husband's love, just like her mom had done to earn her dad's. She wrote, I'm so tired and lonely. What's the right thing to do here? I replied, Sasha, can you tell me a story about the truest, most beautiful marriage you can imagine? Danielle, a 34-year-old former kindergarten teacher, wrote to me recently. 
She spends her days and nights watching her seven-year-old die slowly in her arms, tortured by the same dis-ease that killed her first son three years ago. Night and day, she sits by her, son, her son's bedside, feeding him, singing to him, soothing him. I'm broken, Gwendolyn, she wrote. I don't know what to do. I wrote back, Danielle, what is your truest, most beautiful story you can imagine about a mother and her sons? Each of them replied to me. Claire wrote a story about a woman who had never abandoned herself, who faced life on life's terms, and was present for herself, for her people, for her life. She believed in that vision enough to begin therapy and to safely let rise to the surface all the pain she was trying to drown out with wine. Months later, she wrote, Months later, she wrote to say that her new way of being is harder than ever, but it's the right kind of hard. She's not missing her own life anymore. When she looks at herself in the mirror, she no longer needs to look away. She is now a woman who can look into her own eyes. Sasha spent several evenings writing a story about the truest, most beautiful marriage she could imagine. She spent the week mustering the courage to send it to me because she was scared to let someone on the outside see what was on her inside. Eventually, she printed it out and left it on her husband's pillow. She was heartbroken when he didn't mention it for three weeks. Then one night, she found an invitation from him asking her to go on a marriage retreat. To go to a marriage retreat. They could both imagine something more beautiful, it turned out. They were ready to try to make it real. Danielle wrote back to me from her son's hospital bedside after I asked her about the truest, most beautiful story about parenting she could imagine. She said this, I've spent the past week considering your question. I can imagine a thousand easier stories about mothers and sons. I can think of a million happier ones, but I cannot imagine a single story truer or more beautiful than the heartbreaking one I'm living now with my boys. Me either, I wrote back, me either. The truest, most beautiful life never promised to be an easy one. We need to let go of the lie that it's supposed to be. Each of those women has begun to live from her imagination. Here's how. Each honored her own discontent. She did not dismiss it, bury it, deflect it, deny it, blame it on someone else, or tell herself to shut up and be grateful. She heard her knowing whisper, not this. And she admitted to herself that she heard it. She sat with it for a while, then she dared to utter her inner whisper out loud. She shared her discontent with, an other, with another human being. Then, when she was ready to move from not this to this instead, she dared to call upon her imag imagination to tell her the story she was born to tell with her life. She dreamed up what it would look like to have her specific version of truth and beauty come to life. She looked for the blueprint she'd been born with, the one she'd forgotten existed. She unearthed her unseen order, her original plan. Excuse me. Then, and this crucial, then, and this is crucial, she put pen to paper. The people who build their truest, most beautiful lives usually do. It's hard to jump from dreaming to doing. As every architect or designer knows, there's a critical step between vision and reality. Before imagination becomes three-dimensional, it usually needs to become two-dimensional. It's as though the unseen order needs to come to life one dimension at a time. Women have sent me so many of their two-dimensional dreams over the years, they say, for me, the truest, most beautiful life, family, world looks like. I marvel at how wildly different each of the stories, each of their stories is. It's proof that our lives were meant, were never meant. Let me breathe because I'm so excited with all the energy of healing that's happening on my journey today. And oh, I define me. It is what I say it is. I heal me. I trust me. I know me. I grow me. Oh, I'm a whole vibe.
I marvel at how wildly different each of their stories is. It's proof that our lives were never meant to be cookie cutter, culturally constructed carbon copies of some ideal. There is no one way to live, love, raise children, arrange a family, run a school, a community, a na listen, no one way of doing it. The norms were created by somebody and each of us is somebody. Remember I was telling y'all the somebody I was looking for is me. The somebody you looking for, something that you know must change, you are the somebody. If you're saying somebody need to do something, hello somebody. Because I said somebody need to do something for us, queen goddesses. Somebody need to do something for moon energy. Somebody need to do something for these suns and moons being against each other and thinking we can't heal that we each other's enemy instead of each other's partners. Somebody is me. And each of us is somebody. We can make our own normal. We can throw out all the rules and write our own. We can build our lives from the inside out. We can stop asking what the world wants from us and instead ask ourselves what we want for our world. We can stop looking at what's in front of us enough to discover what's inside us. We can remember and unleash the life-changing, relationship-changing, world-changing power of our own imagination. It might take us a lifetime. Luckily, a lifetime is exactly how long we have. Let's conjure up from the depths of our souls the truest, most beautiful lives we can imagine, the truest, most beautiful families we can fathom, the truest, most beautiful world we can hope for. Let's put it all on paper. Let's look at what we've written and decide that these are not pipe dreams. These are our marching orders. These are the blueprints for our lives, our families, and the world. May the invisible order become visible and may our dreams become our plans. May the invisible order become visible and may our dreams become our plans because we are living the dream. When we go to sleep, we are awake behind closed eyes receiving our message and we are now living the dream. Listen, warrior rising as we are warriors rising and we spell out warrior with W heart because we're always leading in love. We're gonna speak the truth in love and we love ourselves first. Flip one, no is the beginning of self-respect. Flip two, we love ourselves and we're loyal to our royal selves. Flip three, we create our culture. It is what we say it is. IYC is real. You are a vibe. What's your vibe? What's your vibe? It will attract your pride and your tribe. Much love.